Hi, everyone, and thanks for joining today's Channel Vision webinar. This is Channel Vision editor Gerald Baldino here, and I'll be your moderator for today's event. Today, we'll be discussing AirSpring's global SD-WAN solution, a modern solution for the world of international business. With us today is Dave Pierce, who is director of global SD-WAN at AirSpring, and Eli Lazich, who is director of business development for global SD-WAN. We're also joined by Rahindra Chaipathy, who is a senior systems engineer for VMware. If you have any questions, please submit them through the Q&A portal located at the bottom of the Zoom platform. A Q&A session will take place at the end of the webinar. At this point, I'd like to turn the webinar over to Dave to begin. Dave? Thanks, Gerald, for that warm introduction. Appreciate that. And thank you, everyone, for attending our educational webinar today on AirSpring's managed global SD-WAN. As you'll see, AirSpring and VeloCloud are changing the game when it comes to how global SD-WAN is delivered. And in this webinar, uh, you're going to learn more of the key factors that are driving adoption of SD-WAN and the importance of a global private network. We'll spend some time on the challenges of global application delivery, the complexities involved, and the advantages of partnering with AirSpring. You're also going to learn how to determine the necessary components and those elements that make up a global SD-WAN solution. Uh, during this presentation, uh, you're going to discover the key differentiators and advantages of AirSpring's global SD-WAN service. And our focus is going to help you learn how your customers can deliver traffic into and out of China without being blocked by the strict government regulations that we know that take place there and how they control that application content and data that traverses the, uh, the public Internet. Lastly, we're going to spend a little bit of time on buyer's personas, who to connect with, what their issues are, and then what motivates them to buy. And at the end of this uh, webinar, uh, I think you're going to have a better feel for how AirSpring's customizable global managed SD-WAN service should be in your portfolio in 2020, and how this unique solution differs from other products on the market today. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. Just a little bit about AirSpring. Uh, as you're looking to find and working with AirSpring, we are the leader when it comes to cloud, voice, and managed global network services. We were founded in 2001. We're 100% channel focused. And we're an organization that uh, has a tremendous number of different companies utilizing our services. Currently, we service more than 16,000 plus businesses today. And because of that and our global reach, uh, we are the multi-location experts when it comes to managed voice, connectivity, and cloud applications. Uh, combine this with our global around-the-clock network operations support that is set up to support our customers 24-7, 365. Uh, you're going to have the opportunity to work with us, and your clients are going to like the fact that uh, they can get all these different applications and solutions through one responsible vendor. With that said, it's important to have a good feel for what is our customer makeup. And as you can see from our NASCAR slide, it is made up of various organizations in various industries in various verticals, ranging from small businesses that utilize us for mission critical solutions to the largest of large Fortune 100, Fortune 500 organizations. Combine that with our award-winning products and services, AirSpring has had over 70 coveted industry awards, ranging from leadership awards to customer service excellence awards. So as we set the stage for global SD-WAN, it's important to understand some of the facts. And one of those is you look at adding AirSpring and focusing in global SD-WAN specifically. Uh, you can see in the upper left-hand corner that the market growth and expectations going into 2023 is large, getting into $12.1 billion of projected revenue. And this is a great time. So when you start thinking about what products and solutions may be saturated that you offer today, uh, there's plenty of uplift to be focusing on this solution. The other important factor is when we think about deployments and implementations, a key fact to take away from this today is when you think about the number of days it can take to implement MPLS in a global or far-reaching regional uh, realm, 
the number of days can range from 90 to 120 plus, which is not ideal for most organizations who deploy globally. Our primary focus today and some key facts for you to consider is specifically around global private network. And I want you to pay close attention to the variation in response times compared to the internet and also how fast a global private network uh, can increase application time compared to the internet. And we'll get into that in more detail today. We're going to focus in on cost savings. A lot of organizations uh, are looking to consume versus construct within their own networks. And if you catch an organization at that right time and they're looking to consume, it's a great time to introduce global SD-WAN. And Raj, at his point, when he gets into it a little bit more detail, we'll talk about the ease of deployments at the branch locations and the value that that offers. So as we set the stage for the rest of this webinar, it's important to focus in on uh, some of the key challenges. And one of those, which is front and center, is unpredictable application performance. When we think about application traffic over the public internet and those links, those internet links lack SLAs for predictable performance. Every change in the application requires a quality of service and a manual change across those branches and even at the data centers. That leads to also complex infrastructure. Traditional WAN today has a multitude of single function devices and appliances connecting into that WAN link. This causes infrastructure sprawl caused by complexity of the branch IT and the management to support that. When you look at expensive bandwidth, Limited bandwidth and expensive private MPLS circuits really inhibit the rollout and can impact performance of those applications. And when you think about putting in MPLS WAN for redundancy, it's complex to deploy and it's expensive and there's a lot of management around that. That all equates to a rigid architecture and impacting those applications for employee performance. Today you're going to learn more about some of the different advantages, uh, ranging from reducing costs, how we simplify branch networks, how we can deliver branch agility, and ultimately, how do we optimize application performance, taking away packet loss, latency, and jitter, and all the other elements, and how do we overlay that with optimization technology that comes as part of this solution. So with that said, I want to go ahead and hand this over to Raj to consider and continue to take uh, more of a look into how VMware is approaching this. Raj, go sure. ahead. Sure. Thanks, Dave, uh, for that. Uh, I would like to kind of now go in how the network has been built so far for so several decades, right? Uh, it's almost the same uh, uh, kind of a network, which is more targeted with more hub and spoke topology where the resources were either in the data center or in the, in the headquarters and the branch used to kind of communicate to the headquarters uh, in a hub and spoke fashion. Right. With this type of topology, the, the main um, issue was with the uh, any new changes or uh, additions needed to have a um, lot of CLI based provisioning. Right? Any configuration changes were all done manually through CLI, which kind of added for the human errors, right? Uh, this, and in each port, topology was not that easy to do. Addition to the MPLS network, most of this network built with or this expensive MPLS private link, any traffic which is not only consumed by the data center, right? Even if it's consumed for the internet or any of them, all of that were backhauled from the, on this MPLS link. So you're uh, overburdening MPLS or buying a bigger pipe of MPLS paying extra cost just to carry some traffic which are not intended, uh, which could have been offloaded. On top of it, the, the network capacity and planning, we didn't have much of uh, any um, analytics or monitoring capabilities to kind of find where the network is. And if you want to add a new branch or an add a new site uh, or decommissioning, we were not had that visibility how the network was, right? I just, uh, most of the network was built, either it was over built or under uh, built. So it was in that, and there was no optimal way of uh, network, right? These are the, the existing changes what we have 
with our traditional network. Right. So that the how did the, this was kind of uh, mitigated, right? Uh, we added an abstraction layer where the SD WAN came in and added an uh, software abstraction layer. We call it a software overlay. And using that, the uh, we could mitigate all of these issues, as well as there are a few additional things from VMware, SD WAN, Babala Cloud. The biggest is the the real time application performance. So this is basically like say you have voice or video call going on, and if you have multiple links, uh, the the every link is monitored for SLAs like latency, jitter, packet loss. So based on any of the uh, imparities or if the links are not good, the uh, the uh, the SD WAN, the edge itself automatically takes the proper decision to take to the go to a link which is actually uh, better in quality or best among all the links, right? It's all happened in real time and no, and it's done with the business intelligence uh, built into the SD WAN. The other one is uh, the way they mentioned is where deployment of the branches, right? Or any of the configuration changes, which used to be all CLI, now you can do it all, it's automated and uh, there's a simple simplicity built in so that you don't feel your network is so complex to uh, deploy or to even manage. The last is where we are seeing a lot of uh, customers are moving towards the cloud with the optimized cloud on, on ramp to the cloud access, right? So based on the edge, based on the location, closest uh, gateways are, uh, the traffic are sent to the closest gateway and to the closer and to the cloud. So you get a very optimized cloud access with a better user performance. So now with SD-WAN, putting all this together, right? Uh, now with the, the provisioning, which used to take sometimes days or months and uh, that in a private network with having MPLS, now you And also you don't have to have an MPL link as the default. You can have an LTE or even an broadband link to bring up the branch and be still able to connect to your MPLS or to the data center and cloud without, uh, and later on if needed, you can add an MPLS link. So with the business intelligence uh, on the Vela Cloud, uh, Edge device, you there with multiple man link. Now, some of the traffics, let's say you're going to, that's uh, it's going to Netflix or any of the uh, cloud access, Office 365 or any of them, actually that can be offloaded at the branch to the local internet itself, instead of carrying the, on the MPLS link. So you can use that MPLS link for more business critical applications uh, on that. So that way the user gets a better user experience, right? And your MPLS are used only for that traffic which are going to that particular uh, need. On top of it, with the analytics and uh, uh, built-in and the management automation, now you have the whole visibility of the whole network of yours, including the bandwidth and how, where, how, the, how the resources are being used. Based on that, now you can actually see when a new uh, site or a branch is getting added, you already know how the capacity is. You can pre-plan or uh, you can add that uh, additional load as and when needed, right? Uh, it's more like as you, you can think of as a pay as you grow or shrink as you, as you want. So you have that flexibility now on your wide area networking. So with that, I would like to how what are the drivers which is actually pushing towards SD WAN, which Dave mentioned that right, where we are going for, from 500 million to a 12 billion in 2023. So the drivers are a lot of companies are moving towards a cloud, right? Uh, a lot of the round prem or apps are going to the cloud. Uh, that's pushing uh, to have the WAN network to adopt to that. The next is organizations are moving from a hardware centric because the networks are changing, it is evolving. Being a hardware centric, it takes the time and the agility is not there in the, in the existing traditional network. So there's a change happening uh, to go towards a technology which can adopt to it. Third is automation, right? With automation, we've seen the, the simplicity, operational benefits of it and the deployment. So automation is the biggest part also pulling in that. Last but not the least is 
where the cost savings right it's not just the cost saving of the 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 van links let's say mpls is for sure right and also the deployment time right which i told initially instead of months or days you're in minutes where you get the customer onboarded quickly you'll get a better revenue and your customer experience also better so it's a big cost savings here moving from a traditional network to a sd wan network um, with all the benefits so there are close to 70 plus vendors of sd wan how do you select which is the best vendor who is able to kind of have a vision and the capabilities to able to solve and be the partner with you right so uh, gartner my uh, magic quadrant has for quantity two consecutive years has made vmware sd wan as a leader uh, and it's in highest to execute as well as they believe in our vision and made us as the 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 furthest among all the competitors as a best vision to have where the sd wan will be going uh, forward similarly uh, quadrant knowledge solution they also have a uh, uh, named vmware as a global sd wan technology leader and uh, we are way ahead of the pack from the execution as well as the leadership point of view that means that we have what the sd wan today we have was more kind of solved the existing issues were the challenges which were faced mainly where the branches to get connectivity to a uh, to a data center or a public or a private cloud right so it was built on that where we were utilized multiple broadband or mpls or lte links and there were a couple of models one is the over the top service or a resources uh, needed on the, on the cloud so this kind of solved the existing network challenges what we have today right and moving forward what uh, vmware is demand we feel is the way the network is going right and how it can evolve so uh, this is where we are saying is as a network age as the next sd wan path or growth happening in the network age where it's not just the users who are connecting a lot of this iot devices and things or devices which gets connected to the edge which needs network services and with some of them are automated services I'm not sure there is a. Excuse me, I think there is some slight uh, technical glitch. Uh, can we? We are looking into this. Apologies for the for the issue here. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Uh, sorry for that. Mm. so uh, the network edge where you have devices uh, also getting connected to the branch which is causing a lot more uh, device itself asking for requirement of bandwidth and iot and all that so in the edge we are seeing the edge compute uh, coming in where you don't want to send all the data towards the cloud it is more towards the uh, you want to process all the data in the edge and then only send the data which are critical information needed to the cloud and more, do most of the compute at the edge itself right uh, and similarly it's happening on the infrastructure where we're moving from uh, we are having from a bare metal to vm and now into the container space on that the other thing is the 5g you heard a lot about 5g coming in uh, where uh, one of the advantage with 5g compared to other 3g or 4g was where you the network can be uh, more, the cellular network you can have a programmability or the intelligence of there to program the network with slices and uh, network segments so in sd wan we already today do that with that are you using that for broadband or mpls or lte link we do monitor the underlay and based on that we take uh, uh, the proper decision so we kind of uh, we are ready already ahead for ig of ig and we will be incorporating that uh, into that so into uh, the edge or sd wan platform the thing is sd wan so far was a solution uh to kind of uh, mitigate the existing challenge uh, of traditional network but moving forward feel that sd wan as a platform because it's not only just solving a proper uh, solution it is able to kind of mitigate or automatically heal 
uh, and adopt to the evolution of the network, right? As the, the, the applications move towards the cloud or IoT coming in, all of its computing, you basically, the sd one will be able to adopt to it and your network will be more stable and be evolved with the, net, with the technology. The last is the hybrid cloud integration where uh, you see a lot more customers not only going to one cloud, they may be having integration across the clouds. It can be private, public, or data center. And uh, we feel that sd one now can be integrated across all so that way you can have any app on any place on any device and still be able to secure all of them uh, with the security and be, uh, make sure that your network is able to handle all this uh, in a seemingly uh, 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 fashion. With that, I would like to hand it over to Eli, who will now take over where they will see the using the VMware SD-WAN as a foundation, how Airspring has built a, a global managed SD-WAN. Yeah, great. Thanks, Raj. Uh, thanks for that great uh, overview of the Velo Cloud uh, Foundation. And I uh, also want to thank Dave for um, uh, laying the foundation for uh, Airspring as an organization. And uh, I'll take you through the next uh, portion of the uh, presentation here and um, uh, try to tie this together from the concept of what Airspring as uh, an organization is doing with the SD-WAN product that uh, VeloCloud uh, has so uh, competently provided to the market, as you saw Raj describe there. Um, so what Airspring's done is we've developed a solution uh, to market uh, to address the need for a global SD-WAN. We call it a winning combination. I think that you'll see that that's a clear winning combination because of the leverage of the underlying Velo Cloud offering from uh, VMware. And as you saw Raj mention there, uh, it's a Gartner Magic uh, Quadrant Leader, a couple of years running. Combine that with the fact that uh, Airspring uh, brings to this solution not only the over-the-top options, which uh, offer a great deal of functionality with the dynamic multi-path capability to use uh, existing internet links, LTE, and or MPLS, but we add to that now this uh, concept of a global private network. And as you'll see that described in a little bit here, that offers the functionality of a guaranteed latency mitigation, packet loss, and jitter uh, mitigation to provide uh, performance application and productivity assurance to organizations as they move forward. Uh, down on the bottom of the slide, you'll see some of the same facts that Raj talked about here in terms of uh, the Velo Cloud offering, uh, the market leader, it's a quick and cost-effective deployment of new locations. Uh, this whole concept of getting away from, again, as Raj very well described uh, previously, this whole concept of getting away from the manual configuration of devices as you deploy them out to these far-flung locations. The so-called zero-touch deployment, eliminating uh, the effects of human error as you go through command line uh, interfaces to deploy these uh, edge devices out in these locations. And uh, um, these uh, global locations that are addressed by the global private network from uh, Airspring, as we'll detail here in a bit, again, offer consistent connectivity across the globe. And uh, most importantly, um, at the end of the day, what we're all attempting to do here with SD-WAN is to provide an infrastructure to guarantee application performance so that the lifeblood of organizations can continue to operate at an effective uh, rate. And uh, all of this, again, resulting in the combination of economics and deployment flexibility so that uh, we can meet the needs of any customer regardless of where they may end up deploying locations across the globe. So let's dig into this a little deeper from the global SD-WAN perspective. So in front of you, you should see now the locations that Airspring has deployed in terms of data centers that make up those global private network locations. Again, the idea here to reiterate this is to mitigate the impact of latency, jitter, and packet loss. Simple fact of the matter is the farther away uh, locations are from each other, the more of an impact latency will have in terms of degrading the performance of an application. Uh, 
So again, those 15 locations, you see the cluster of them in the uh, Asia Pacific location. You see Europe is pretty well covered. And then over in the North America uh, domestic location, uh, we've got those uh, global private network data center locations well distributed across the globe to address customers that have international locations. Those are highly available, dedicated access to and from locations uh, in China, as well as across the rest of the globe, offering customers this ability to expand their international reach and ensure and increase application performance as they deploy across the globe. A little further architecture on that managed global SD-WAN. If we look at uh, some of the uh, underlying uh, pieces that make up what we're bringing to market here, uh, VMware, again, is uh, the core of what AirSpring builds their managed global SD-WAN uh, platform on. That includes, again, the edge devices that you saw described, the DMPO or dynamic multi-path optimization, application visibility that you get along with uh, the orchestrator uh, functionality, the visibility into uh, uh, how those links are performing, and some of the other additional features that we'll describe here shortly that AirSpring uniquely provides in combination with the uh, Bello Cloud platform. One of those is visibility and control. So one of the unique functions that is brought to light there, you see this, uh, Air, this uh, product we call Air NMS Managed Link Monitor. We'll detail that out shortly. But in effect, what that offers is uh, customers the ability to assure that their edge links, their last mile, first or last mile links are up and running and uh, can in fact be managed on a 24 by 7 basis by AirSpring. Uh, in terms of managed global connectivity, the global private network uh, will offer that uh, ability to uh, allow customers to extend their reach across the globe and effectively deploy locations uh, in a timely fashion, allowing them to be agile, to scale, and uh, continue the operations uh, effectively of their underlying line of business applications. And then layering on top of those underlying components, um, there are a couple of unique aspects that AirSpring bring, brings to the picture. One of them is the uh, AirSpring multi-cloud connect functionality. So tying into that global private network that we've already discussed, uh, which again offers the ability to allow customers to tie their locations to each other on effectively their own private enterprise wide area network, uh, utilizing our backbone, and then using the off ramps uh, from those uh, backbone locations uh, to effectively connect to one of the underlying infrastructure, platform, or software as a service providers, some of which you see in the picture here. So things like AWS with a virtual private cloud or Azure or Oracle with Fast Connect or Office 365 or Salesforce. Because the, the GPN that we've built is well connected to these cloud providers, it offers AirSpring the ability to utilize that GPN to off-ramp a customer so that they can not only use the GPN for WAN connectivity between their locations, but now effectively off-ramp to connect to one of these cloud providers and consume the applications or virtual uh, data centers uh, effectively, regardless of where their locations may be. Second component you'll see there refers to the AirSpring WAN optimization function. And that uh, is built at each of the GPN locations to provide a TCP deduplication and layer seven application acceleration. Again, all aimed at uh, mitigating the effects of latency as distance increases so that data that doesn't change uh, at a great rate is delivered to users as close to the user as is possible, effectively cached uh, at the GPN location so that it mitigates having to send that request or send the data across a long distance link, exposing it to uh, high levels of latency, packet loss and jitter again. And uh, last but not least in the architectural component here is the uh, managed security. So the components there are, there's a stateful firewall that's built in, 
uh, to the solution that we provide at a managed level along with micro segmentation and uh, an advanced next generation firewall, offering customers the ability to uh, remain uh, secure in the fact that their information is uh, protected as it traverses the wide area network. So let's dig in a little deeper into how this actually functions. So if we start with um, a public internet as kind of the, um, the underlay, if you will, uh, before we overlay the global private network on top of it, and we see how this all connects using um, the core Velo Cloud functionality and then build in the uh, AirSpring unique uh, GPN functionality on top of it, We'll see that we use the public internet connections uh, and then overlay that with the Velo Cloud Edge devices. And those Velo Cloud Edge devices will then establish the uh, tunnels uh, through the DMPO, the dynamic mu uh, multipath optimization that we've mentioned. And uh, those sites will be able to connect to each other using public internet links. Uh, DIA links at the edge, LTE links, MPLS, again, all those links that were available as you saw through the slides that Raj presented. And that's all fine and well. Uh, and then if you layer that on top of the, um, uh, the GPN functionality, again, what that brings to the picture is this guaranteed uh, connectivity, this reliability, this consistency. As a matter of fact, an SLA backed platform that guarantees a level of performance to customers so that they don't see that variance in latency as they connect from a location in Munich, for example, uh, connecting to a Los Angeles headquarters to consume data between those two locations. And again, that, uh, that guaranteed performance oftentimes provides customers the assurance and, uh, and ability to consume their line of business applications at a much improved uh, level as opposed to going over public internet links or, or having to hub and spoke over an MPLS link. And then utilizing those global private networks again exposes the uh, ability for a customer to then use the uh, AirSpring um, uh, WAN optimization functionality which provides again that TCP deduplication and application acceleration function on top of uh, connecting to that GPN link itself. The, um, the uh, magnifying glass that you see there we'll uh, touch on here shortly. As a matter of fact, the next slide, and that again refers to the Air NMS link monitoring. And the last component, again, bringing that back in from the architectural slide is the uh, multi-cloud connect function. Again, we can use the GPN to off-ramp from that uh, global private network to any of a number of cloud, uh, cloud providers. Again, infrastructure, platform, software as a service. Uh, you see the names of those common providers that you might see uh, customers consume at any given point in time. So what is Air NMS? Well, Air NMS is a network management and monitoring system that is uh, staffed 24 by seven by AirSpring network operations personnel. And through an agreement, a letter of authorization between the customer and AirSpring, um, we can take on the responsibility of not only monitoring those links for a customer, uh, which by the way, they can also procure through AirSpring <laughs> in a global fashion, but then um, with that responsibility of monitoring those links, we can take on the function of managing those links on the customer's behalf. Benefit to the customer becomes that uh, if we recognize that a link alerts uh, or worst case scenario were to go down, uh, AirSpring network operation personnel can raise a trouble ticket with the carrier on the customer's behalf work the problem through to resolution with uh, the carrier and get that link back up and running all without the customer um, even lifting a finger to uh, i mean they'll recognize obviously they'll see an alert that a link has uh, experienced an issue uh, but uh, air air spring personnel will be on the ball getting that uh, problem resolved in a quick and timely fashion so that the customer's business operations uh, don't skip a beat 
All right, here you see some of the uh, global SD-WAN features. Give me a second, let me get back to that. It hopped forward on me. I'm not sure if we've got technical difficulties again. Um, well, if I can, whoever has control, if I can get you to back up uh, just one more slide, I wanted to go over the features just really quickly. Well, we lost that slide. So when we can get back to it, we'll come back and cover some of those high level features. But at this point, let me get you into the orchestrator and talk a little bit about the details of what the orchestrator can provide you. So what you see in front of you here is an example screen from the orchestrator. And uh, what the orchestrator is, again, that's the uh, VeloCloud orchestrator that provides the configuration information that gets disseminated to the edge devices. Uh, I should mention at this point, there are a number of orchestrators that VeloCloud runs across their organization. Uh, Airspring is, uh, is, has a dedicated orchestrator, uh, meaning it's Airspring's own orchestrator. Um, what you'll find um, in the deployment of orchestrators oftentimes is those orchestrators are shared by organizations that might be running uh, other SD-WAN solutions. So that's an important point to bring up is that this is uh, solely dedicated to Airspring. It's not shared by any other organization. And again, that configuration information is sent down to those edge devices. And what you see here is an example of one of those edge devices that shows the um, uh, the current status of one of those links. This happens to be a link from Megapath. And you see the information that it gives you. It gives you the latency, the jitter, and the packet loss. So that, and as you'd expect, green, yellow, red indicate uh, in stoplight fashion whether something is good, whether something's uh, bordering between good and uh, critical, or if it goes red, then it's completely unavailable. And so based on these types of metrics, the orchestrator can send down automated configuration information so that in this case, that edge device can decide on its own. Well, I've got a link that's not performing up to snuff, so I can shut that link off and I can send the traffic across the surviving links to ensure that the, the data actually gets from point A to point B. On this next slide, you see the uh, orchestrator and its identification of applications. So out of the box, there is identification of uh, well over 2,500 applications. The importance of this uh, to an organization is that um, now you know exactly what applications are being used uh, as, as you deploy the SD-WAN solution. And then you can control the amount of bandwidth that certain applications can use. Uh, so that your voice applications, for example, don't get starved in a critical situation if you have a call center or your data backups aren't starved, uh, depending on the time of day that you need the data backups to complete. And with that, I'll hand it over to Dave and he'll uh, take you the rest of the way here and talk about the buyer personas. Thanks, Eli. I appreciate that and uh, appreciate you taking us through the uh, key advantages and features along with the differentiators that uh, we provide. So, as we talked about lastly, when we think about understanding the applications, understanding our global private network platform, and now it's about taking it out and determining who should I connect with and what are the ideal uh, buyers. Uh, what's the ideal company and who do they and what does that look like and when you start thinking about what we discussed today just as a refresher on this when you start to pull those lists together think about organizations that you deal with that have branch offices located on different continents most importantly or within the same continent but separated by large distances think also when you're having these discussions with either the technical buyer for example they may be looking to replace their incumbent expensive, less flexible global solutions. We see that a lot today where they may be utilizing another service or something somewhat similar, and they just aren't getting the capabilities that they need. It's a perfect time to rip and replace. Um, a lot of times you're going to hear it, and you're going to hear this not only from the technical buyer, but potentially the business buyer, those folks who are overseeing some of those applications. They are just not performing to the level that they need. There's productivity issues, there's inefficiencies, 
and people within the organization are complaining about it, uh, especially with the performance challenges of, of cloud. When you think also about who else can you target, you know, most cases we're all used to working with the technical buyers, the IT folks, network and applications operations folks. There are two other key targeted uh, personas that you want to go after, and that could be within the digital transformation officer, uh, a marketing high-level individual who oversees uh, expansion into new markets, and then obviously HR and the corporate entities who deal with the ERP solutions and everything else that makes that company run underneath of that. So think about that when you start looking at who else can you approach because it opens up a number of avenues. When you take it from not only understanding what the buyer's persona is and who do you target, it's also very important to understand what are their key issues. And again, from an ideal company perspective, you're going to start to have discussions with a technical buyer, a business buyer, or a corporate buyer where they're experiencing and they have today a complex infrastructure, too many vendors, too many devices, which causes infrastructure sprawl. And a lot of these organizations are looking to say, hey, I want to get all of this from last mile internet connectivity, international connectivity, uh, capabilities through the global edge devices and global private network. And I can get that all under one bill, one invoice, and deal with one point of contact, which AirSpring can provide. And again, we talked about a lot of these other areas on the left-hand side. So if you're having discussions and you start to hear these triggers, that is your ideal company. And when you start to think about falling not only outside of the technical buyer, but to those business buyers, keep in mind, it's a great avenue to have discussions around how are they reaching more customers? What are they doing about time to market? How can I accelerate the performance of our sites and all those applications that reside there? And then too, with the corporate buyer, you've got to think about how can you help them with internal and external clients, remote users, and key application performance. And they succeed, obviously, when the business and revenue owner and the technical buyer succeeds. So that lays the framework for some of the issues, the buyer's personas. Um, as we start to wrap this up, uh, think about next steps with us and how you engage with us. One, the primary takeaway from today's webinar is to determine if it makes sense to add this solution and AirSpring solution to your portfolio. You sell a lot of things today. Uh, you're going to find that uh, our teams are very easy to work with, and we are here to help you win business. If you're not an AirSpring partner today, become one. Uh, and also, if you are an AirSpring partner today, reach out, engage with the AirSpring channel managers, or reach out to me, and we will get you directed to the right folks. We're here to help you promote those solutions and close deals together. With that, I want to thank everybody for joining and open this up for questions that we may have and uh, answer those for you. All right. Thank you guys for the, for the great presentation just now. Um, yeah, uh, Q&A is open, so please feel free to submit questions uh, through the bottom of the portal there in the, the Q&A section. Uh, let's start from the top. We've got a couple in the queue here. Um, I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about total cost of, um, uh, of the solution. Uh, is it connected to the number of branch offices in the network? You know, there's a couple different there's a couple different avenues of how this uh, solution is priced and and it's broken into a couple of areas. One is to the actual branch with the edge devices. Uh, it's also based upon licensing and uh, in tunnel throughput. And we work to right size that based upon the branch. And then we also take into account uh, regional headquarter locations, things of that nature when we right size that. Uh, there's also an overlay with that if an organization is looking to tie back into for key locations where they want to take advantage of that global private network. And then we look at the bandwidth utilization and determine those important applications that we want to be sure has access and runs over that global private network. And then we can also add some additional services over that, whether it be WAN optimization, which is priced a little bit differently and is an add-on option, as well as a multi-cloud connect and things of that nature. And, and would you say it's, it's feasible uh, or cost effective to connect remote workers uh, from homes in large numbers that's like going on right now 
uh, via SD-WAN. Um, it's feasible. Um, you know, our, our solution was really meant to address uh, connectivity as uh, customers deployed uh, the so-called brick and mortar locations across the globe where uh, you would have uh, multiple or numerous, numerous users under the same building. Um, as a matter of fact, we, we were discussing this a little earlier and Raj, I don't know if you wanted to add in your, your two cents on this, but as I understand it, uh, VMware is seeing an uptick uh, in some of the edge devices as the current situation is unfolding. So it's certainly feasible. Um, it's, um, it's not something that we necessarily had, had conceived of, not, not that anyone conceived of this particular situation coming about, but uh, certainly something that's feasible. Yeah, sure, yeah. Uh, yeah. To add to that is absolutely, we, there are some uh, with, the, with the recent uh, things going on, uh, we have seen where with the, some of the uh, customers for work from home office or work home office solution, they are kind of looking at the fight and LT, there's an LT module, module base so that we have uh, the uh, diversities of the broadband. So link with both LT as well as uh, the traditional broadband and uh, still give that uh, business or uh, application uh, intelligence, which Eli mentioned, right? Uh, it's built into the thing so that we get a better voice quality and uh, have multi, if you have multi-link, you can get, uh, you do almost, you know, get a better uh, application performance. Okay, um, here's another question that came in. Uh, would you say that SD-WAN eliminates or lessens the need to have a separate backup network uh, for redundancy? Um, well, yeah, that, so that's a great question. Um, so the way I'd look at that is um, you, you kind of flip that around on itself. So where you might have seen customers deploy a secondary network just in case the primary network were to go down or load balance, that's part and parcel of this as an automated function, right? So you can take these diverse networks, whether they come from uh, Ethernet, whether they come from uh, an LTE cell signal, whether they come from MPLS, or in the case of the GPN that you saw, a dedicated connection to one of our GPN locations. And they all get bundled together. And, and if you remember back that first orchestrator slide where we see the links that each of those edge locations might have available to them, uh, those devices automatically monitor the situation and the status of those links so that you're effectively you're effectively using all of those links as a backup so it's not necessarily eliminating the need i position it as it's augmenting that function uh, and and taking the responsibility off of you as the customer's shoulders to manage the the balancing of those links if you will Okay, um, among some of the benefits that you discussed here, um, are there one or two that's driving the adoption um, uh, the most or, or that customers are seeking the most? Uh, what generally starts the sales conversation when speaking with people? You know, from that standpoint, um, I'm going to defer part of that uh, to Raj on the front end, and then we can come back and address uh, well, you know, what are the conversation starters. So Raj, I know you've, you've talked about adoption and where you're seeing that. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? And then I'll come on the back side of that. Uh, sure. Yeah, a few of the things uh, is the benefit which the customer is getting mainly from, you know, the either the MPLS contract or cost of that. And the other thing is the, the network, the ease of deployment and the pains of the network what they have, right? Uh, we normally either, when we go to the customer, it will be ideally the pain what they're getting or the challenges what they have in the existing traditional network, right? Uh, and if it's more hard, uh, now most of them are hardware centric, kind of where the SD-WAN will solve uh, the first three things which I told, right? The real-time application performance, if it's there, if they have issues with their voice or applications, right? Or not getting properly prioritized because now, a lot of customers are using, you know, some of the, even the uh, social media network and all being consuming the WAN bandwidth. So how it will kind of using this, how they'll be able to get. And the second thing is, as Ila mentioned, is the application uh, visibility. That is a big uh, task because you can see in a lot of organizations, there are a lot of IT, shadow IT, and, you know, uh, all of this which are happening 
and you don't really get that visibility in the X traditional, right? With SD WAN, you do get that visibility. Uh, we have seen customers start with that and see where how their network is actually being consumed. It gives a good visibility for them. Uh, there's a couple of things like one of their challenges and the other one is their visibility, how the network is being uh, consumed. So then once that you show that and then it kind of you know lead to the other cost uh, cost efficiency and all that. But uh, I would say this too is a thing we can start with the customer's uh, conversation. Yeah, I think to add to that, when you start the sales conversations with depending on who you're targeting, right, from a from again, coming back to the buyer's persona, if you're dealing with a technical buyer, obviously, it's all about performance. It's it's quality and reliability. Um, what are they struggling with, right? So if you start to hear and you hear those conversations around complex infrastructure, too many vendors, um, technology refreshes, things of that nature, uh, it's a good conversation to start to have that because um, – we're finding a lot of success with different partners who are who are combining both the value of a global uh, private network uh, edge devices over the top with we can also go to one provider and one vendor to take care of that last mile internet procurement you know connections and so forth and really provide that end to end solution so we're we're having a lot of good conversations around that as starters if you're looking to open it up for the business buyers again whether it be SVPs of marketing, sales, things of that nature, it's time to market, right? They're running into that. Uh, they want to make sure that they can uh, roll into other regions in a timely fashion. Uh, they're experiencing you know, challenges internally. So those are good starters for conversation. Yeah, and then the one other, uh, just another thing to add on to that as a, as a thought. Yeah, a lot of times you'll hear the term digital transformation tossed around with these companies, and it can mean a lot of different things. Right. I mean, there's the obvious uh, disruptors here, such as cloud being adopted, doesn't lend itself all that well to being consumed over MPLS because MPLS requires that you do a hub and spoke, connect a, a location back to headquarters before you can disseminate that connection out across public internet links. SD-WAN lends itself very well to that type of a, a digital transformation. You might also look at it as, uh, as lending itself well to a, a UCAS digital transformation, right, where you've got uh, these voice providers that have data centers across uh, domestic U.S. and international, it's more effective to use an SD-WAN solution. Again, I would argue that it's more effective to use an SD-WAN solution that has a GPN like we have to make sure that those connections uh, branch out uh, to those UCAS locations. Or for that matter, the third part of this in terms of digital transformation becomes security. These hosted security providers like a Zscaler or a Palo Alto and, and the others that are coming on board with these hosted security platforms. Again, you can effectively connect to them from an SD-WAN solution, especially one that has a GPN that can ride over a reliable, consistent backbone. Okay, I, I'd like to talk a little bit about, uh, about perception. Um, is there any concern among employees uh, who manage corporate networks that the network management and automation functions might make their jobs obsolete or less needed? Uh, how are people perceiving SD-WAN when you're, when you're speaking with them? Um, so uh, I'll, I'll start on that one. Uh, this is Eli. Um, so that's come up a number of times. Um, what uh, I think what ends up happening is that if you have effective uh, leadership at an organization, there's a communication that takes place uh, from that leadership. Uh, because oftentimes what's happening here is um, if you think about the 80-20 rule, right? 80% of the time you spend your uh, work efforts on doing the so-called keep the lights on type of uh, uh, functions. 20% of the time with innovation. So oftentimes you'll see these CEOs, CIOs, CTOs that look to uh, leverage their IT staff to get them out from under, um, if you remember Raj's slide with CLI configuration, well, that's time consuming, right? It takes a specialization that it takes a while to learn that specialization, uh, let alone the time to sit in front of an interface and enter in all the commands that are required to get a device configured to properly operate. Um, again, back to the con uh, communication from an executive level, if that's communicated effectively to the organization such that you allay their fears that, look, we're not taking your jobs away. What we're doing is we're trying to make you more effective so that we can help the organization move 
in areas that can help us to expand the reach of the organization, reach new markets, reach new revenue targets. That generally is, is what I found uh, from the customers we've worked with, especially the larger ones that uh, tend to be a, a good approach. Yeah, I think to add to that too, it's, it's around refocusing their efforts, right? Think about what, what organizations are experiencing right now within the last month, for example. I hate to fall back on that, but it's a key element of, you know, with this automation and things of this nature, there are so many different elements and pieces that have to be worked through, whether it be working on different projects and tasks that take prioritization. When you think about the automation features, it allows them to be more effective, to set it and forget it and have the right amount of visibility and control when necessary to make those run more smoothly and refocus th these individuals who are on that staff to do what they do well. You know, Cause a lot of times they are faced with putting out you know, reactive mode fires and so forth and allows them to eliminate some of that and then focus on project priority. Okay, um, you know, we've covered a lot of ground today. Um, of everything that, that you covered, what would you say is your biggest competitive advantage? Uh, well, I'll, I'll start on that. So I'd say it's the, uh, the global private network, right? It positions uh, Airspring's approach to the managed global SD-WAN as a unique differentiator, uh, that reliable, consistent, predictable backbone that mitigates the, the latency, jitter, and packet loss that you'd otherwise uh, encounter when, when you've got uh, locations that are widely geographically dispersed. Um, the, the spice to that, if you will, would be the, the multi-cloud connect, the ability to off-ramp and connect to those cloud locations using that GPN and, and I guess the kicker I'd look at as the uh, WAN optimization, being able to mitigate uh, application performance uh, effectively using that GPN. But it really all comes back to that GPN. Yeah, and I think that is, that is going to be the flexibility in the deployments, whether it be over the top, GPN or hybrid. Um, we've got the capabilities to cross that where a lot of our competitors are, are stuck down a, a single thread. And uh, we're going to give you the most flexibility in those deployment options, as well as the support and capabilities from our solution engineers, architects to support that as well as implementation. So truly end-to-end, -end, fully managed, and uh, providing that uh, right down to the last mile. Okay, I think that should, uh, should wrap things up here. A big thank you to our presenters, to everyone at Airspring and VeloCloud, and of course, to all of you for tuning into today's webinar. To access this webinar on demand, please visit channelvision.com slash webinars. You can learn more about Airspring at airspring.com. Thanks everyone, and we'll see you next time.